If you have ever tried to learn to swim or teach somebody how to swim, you might have had a lot of kicking going on. Holding onto the wall and kicking, grabbing onto a kickboard and kicking, kicking to get to the other side. But what if I was to tell you this is doing it backwards? What? <laughs> Isn't kicking about making you go forward? <laughs> If you're an adult trying to learn to swim, you're a beginner swimmer, would define yourself anywhere in the arena of beginning swimming. You don't know how to breathe, you're not comfortable in the deep end. An adult learning swimmer, if you're focusing on kicking, you're doing it backwards. I'm going to tell you today I'm the insider tips that nobody tells you about kicking and swimming. I am Corey Micah, the creator of Foundations of Change Learning Method to teach adult beginners. You cannot take a kid's program or a kid's method or how it works for kids and expect it to work for adults. For over 20 years, we have worked exclusively with the adult swimmers to get them to go from being overwhelmed, confused, frustrated, full of anxiety and fear to be able to feel freedom and confidence and safety and joy in the water. Today in this video, I'm going to give you some of those insights that we have learned over the years that has made us say, starting with kicking is going about it backwards. Let's jump in. The foundation of change has three main points to it. Get ready, get set, and go. We always say that it's 80% mental to 20% physical. So when you get in and you start working on the kicking and you're doing all the kicking and doing all those actions, you're spending all of that time on this physical part and you're missing out on the 80% that needs to come before. It needs to go along with every time you go and do an action step. So. Let's start with the first one, this first mental part of getting ready. It's gathering in and coming to calm. This means that we're bringing your story from the past and we're kind of taking a look at it and we're seeing, hmm, what is story like drama <laughs> and what is just plain old facts and how things are. Story is what we make things mean and facts is just the way things exist. Water has certain properties and facts to it. Your body has certain properties and facts to it. We're putting those two things together. We're getting this new uh, information. But as you go along, we have a lot of meaning about it. And over time as an adult, this is why we can't just take a kid's program. Over time as an adult, you have a lot of story. Even if you haven't done very much swimming, you've heard about it, you've seen swimming, right? We think we know some things that is gonna try and inform our future. So we wanna understand what is your story you have about kicking? Usually the story people have is that it's pretty important in learning to swim. I mean, after all, those kids swimming lessons, they line them up all on a wall and they start telling them to kick. You know, if you took lessons, maybe they gave you a kickboard and put you on there and you wobbly went along and thought maybe I'm safer because I've got this floaty thing, but I can't balance. <laughs> it must be important is the message that we get. But let's really think about what happens. What we see over and over again is people will get in and they're swimming means kicking their legs and moving their arms and they get across to the other side and they are ugh, exhausted. <laughs> and then the question's like, why am I so out of breath and exhausted by the time I just go across once? You know, these other people seem to just like talk about swimming as if it's relaxing and easy. And I feel like I've ran a marathon and I've just got across one time. What is going on here? I would say that's true. That's a fact that you are tired when you just try and go across one time. The question is why? What's going on there? Let's get, let's dig into that a little deeper. Now, today we're talking particularly about our legs. So when we think about our legs, you know, look at your legs. Like they have big muscles in them. They're big, strong, 
part of our body. And those big muscles take energy and take oxygen. They, if you're going to move them, they're going to, you know, use up a lot of energy. It's much, this is why we sit all day. <laughs> it's much easier just to sit and flap our arms about than it is to move our legs and use all that weight and energy and big muscles. They take energy. So this is just a fact. If we're wanting to swim in this like relaxing, easy way, maybe it's backwards starting with the biggest energy users, our legs. Hmm interesting. Something that's going to have to go into the testing action side. The other thing about our legs is they're not very intuitive when it comes to swimming. And the reason why is the way that we use our legs all day long is there are the powerhouse that moves us around. So we're used to getting from place A to B using our legs. In swimming, however, while you can use your legs, to get from A to B. Just like on land, you know, I can use my um, legs, but I could also sit in an office chair and use my arms. I mean, certainly there are people who move around all the time. It's part of their normal life to use their arms as the powerhouse and not their legs. In the water, you know, it kind of goes the other way. That <clears throat> these legs, they are such uh, energy users. Our hands are actually much easier and where most of our movement happens in the water. So you can use your legs, but more of it comes from your arms, from your hands, from these smaller muscles <laughs> where we talk about relaxing and at ease versus our stomping big legs. So it's not very intuitive. We're used to using our legs to move us around and using our hands very little to move us around. But in the water, it actually works the other way. Hands move us around way more than our legs. We can use them, just like you can use your arms to move yourself around, but it's a different combination of it. The other thing that um, our legs, when we move around in day-to-day -day life, you use the bottom of your feet. We push off the bottom of our feet to make ourselves move when we walk or you run or you hop or you skip, right? Any of the kinds or jump, any of these activities that you do on a very regular basis. Maybe, dear adult, you don't jump that much, <laughs> but you'd walk certainly um, throughout the day using the bottom of your feet. In swimming, very rarely, if ever, you're using the bottom of your foot. That is not where we get the power connection. It works more like kicking a soccer ball a long distance or certain kinds of martial art kicks, whether you're using the top or the side of your foot. So not very intuitive. Again, going back, if you want intuitive movements, when we talk about using our arms, our hands, we actually move with the palms of our hands. Very intuitive. We're very accustomed to using the palms of our hands to interact with the world. This is where using our hands and our arms is much easier. Step number two in the foundation of change is the plan for action. What are the mental steps I need to do for the plan of action? Now, I'm not talking about the plan like make your legs long, soften your knees, flick your foot. I mean a plan for safety. If you're not safe, then you can't be calm enough to reach your goal, which is to swim with joy and ease and confidence. Remember that story before about getting to the other side and you're all out of breath and kind of not calm? <laughs> This is not calm and it's not safe. So we need to make a plan of how can I be safe? Now, why am I talking about this safety when this is a video about kicking? Because if you want to learn anything, you have to be physically and emotionally safe in order to do it. We can't feel in danger to be able to actually learn something. So if you want to learn what to do with your legs in the water, 
you have to be physically and emotionally safe. Now being physically safe, we have a pretty clear cut definition of this and a check of to check on if you have physical safety when it comes to learning to swim. That means that you can get air easily anytime you want. So we're not gonna head off to the deep end <laughs> to experiment with our legs and to figure out how to kick. You need to know how to get air and how to get rest in the middle before you go to the deep end to learn to kick. So what do I mean about mental safety? This is where we get into your beliefs about kicking and about yourself as a learner. So we wanna ask the question, can I be safe without kicking? Kind of the premise of like getting to the other side really quickly usually has an underlying current of in order to swim, I have to move to another place to be safe. I can't be safe right where I am. This is a dangerous proposition because A to B swimming, B sometimes moves. Boats drift, people drift, things move. They're not where we expect them to be. So we need to make sure that our safety is here with us, not about getting to a destination. So can I be safe without kicking? Can you move without using your legs? Do you know what the normal position for your legs are when you do nothing? And can you tolerate that? Are you? When your legs go to their normal position, is there a part of you that keeps saying, something is wrong, I need to change here? Where do they go when they're at rest? What is normal for your legs? On your front, on your back, in between these places? The beginning adult swimmer usually has not explored these questions, especially when you're focusing on, I need to learn to kick. But why? Is it because something bad's gonna happen if you don't know how to kick? When we don't investigate these questions, they leave a question mark back here. And this is where we're emotionally not safe. It's like you're perpetually running away from the bad guy and you've never really actually stopped to see, is there actually a bad guy back there? Or am I just running from my own shadow? It's these questions that we need to open the light of day on before we really expect ourselves to become proficient at the kicking. Because while you might acquire some kicking skills, I get lots of students who have kicking skills, but they don't have any trust or confidence or ease in them. They're over kicking, overpowering. There's a certain um, anxiety to it that says, I need to get it right and need to get it perfect and need to do this because, because what? We need to know that answer. We need to know we're physically and emotionally safe, even if you don't get the kick right. Yes, kicking does have a function in swimming, but it's actually one of the last things that we teach because there's so many more essential skills that come before that create that foundation. Kicking is one very tiny piece of the equation and it comes late. In our online courses, this is where we really lay out the whole everything in order. And when it's time to get to the kicking, then we give it to you in a way that you're like, yes, I'm safe. I know what I'm doing. I don't have to get this right. Now I have space to explore and be curious and really develop an understanding of how the legs and the water work. It becomes much easier to learn them from that place forward. After you know how to move, get air, get rest, what it's like to let go of tension, what it's like to have tension on purpose, find joy and fun and ease in the water, then we can start to work on our kicking with intention. And by the way, if you can do all those things that I just named, you will start to kick intuitively. Or maybe more accurately is you will start to use your legs in helpful and useful ways in an intuitive fashion. That is more important than being able to do a perfect flutter kick. 
because the way you get a perfect flutter kick or a perfect whip kick, which those are the styles of kicks that you would see in the Olympics, let's say, there's a lot of other things that folks know how to do with their legs that is much more intuitive and is about just moving your body and moving in the space of the water. Once your safety is taken care of, then you can move into step three with curiosity, not urgency. And the feel of curiosity shows that emotional safety so that you can test and play and uh, develop and uh, get it wrong in a way that's getting it right. Because after all, on step number three, which is taking action, is actually moving, is actually doing something like you're doing here. You're actually watching this video. You're getting information. You're, this is an action step you're doing right now. But we take action steps that we cannot fail at. Doesn't mean you get it right or it doesn't work out the way you thought it would be, but you can't fail at it because you learn from it. Most of the time when we're learning something new, most of the time we're getting it wrong. <laughs> That's just how learning works. You go out and you do things. You know, how many times have I made videos and deleted them? <laughs> I had to do it. How many times do you get in and you move your legs and, hmm, well, that's not quite what I thought would happen. All right. Well, I'm safe. I'm curious. I have a story that moves me forward. I can test something else. Now I know. Now I have some information. This is the way we want to approach understanding how to use your legs in swimming when you're a beginner swimmer. And remember, those of you who know some swimming things, but you're not confident in the deep end or you don't know how to get air easily and reliably, we will call you a beginner swimmer still. So don't think, well, I can do some things. So now I can start working on that kick a bunch. We have to have that foundation first. That is always my word of warning when it comes to that third step of taking an action is that inevitably what we want to do is we want to start going back to that overwhelm, which is where we started. We had to peel away the overwhelm and confusion in the beginning. And when you get to that action step, you're very tempted to put it back in again. I have to do all of the kicking things. I have to learn all of the safety steps at once. No, no, it's just going to be a tiny, tiny bit. When I first teach the action steps it, with kicking, after people have this safety foundation really laid out and they're intuitively using, using their legs already, the first thing that we start with is just moving our legs, moving my arms as if they're my legs, but moving their legs, just like seeing and experimenting with their legs to start building a brain leg. Hi legs, you're way down there. <laughs> Connection. They're so far away from our center of breathing, safety, <laughs> that we just have to build that connection. So that's the very first thing that we do is build that curious connection to our legs. All right, you guys, amazing job. You took a step today, beautiful. You have grown your foundation. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. You've gotten some new mental steps in. Time to take a physical step. Make sure you have subscribed. That is the easiest, safest, simplest, both physical and mental step to do. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe. Did you do it? If you did, you get to start back in the beginning again saying, yay, more of me. I've taken a step. Look at me. I am more of a swimmer now than I was before just by hitting that little bell there. I'll give you the next one. The next one is to go into the um, description and I've got a couple links in there. Start in with those online courses where I lay it out for you. Or if that doesn't feel safe quite yet, that's too big of a jump for you. Do the freebie. If you haven't grabbed the freebie that's in there, grab the freebie that's in there and keep moving yourself forward. Tiny step by tiny step. 
The water is waiting for you. It's beautiful and amazing. We can't wait to see you online or maybe in Hawaii. Got my Hawaii shirt on. Aloha.